welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the fifth and final video in IB Physics Topic 2, Mechanics, where we will be looking at momentum and impulse. Momentum is defined as the quantity of motion of a mass measured in kilograms meters per second. You can think of it as a measure of how difficult it is to stop an object's motion, which is dependent on the object's mass and velocity. For example, imagine a friend throws you a football at 2 meters per second, and then throws you a bowling ball at 2 meters per second. It is much easier to catch the football than it is the bowling ball, as the bowling ball has more mass than the football, and therefore more motion. Equally, it is much easier to catch a football moving at 2 meters per second than a football moving at 5 meters per second. The formula for momentum is mass times velocity. Momentum often reflects the mechanical energy of an object. The formula relating kinetic energy and momentum is kinetic energy equals momentum squared divided by 2 times mass. Note, total mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energy, so a mass can have zero mechanical energy and still have momentum. But how does momentum interact between two objects? Well, catching either object transfers all of its momentum to you. When catching the football, there is little recoil, but the bowling ball would create significant recoil. In both situations, the total momentum of you and the object stays the same throughout the catch, termed the law of conservation of momentum. This is defined as, if there is no resultant external force, the total momentum of a system of particles remains constant. Mathematically, this is expressed as, total momentum before an event equals total momentum after an event. Typically, two masses are involved in each event, so the formula would be, Mass 1 times initial velocity 1 plus mass 2 times initial velocity 2 equals mass 1 times final velocity 1 plus mass 2 times final velocity 2. The IB expects you to be able to describe four types of events wherein the law of conservation of momentum is obeyed. Elastic collisions, partially inelastic collisions, perfectly inelastic collisions, and explosions. During an elastic collision, there is a perfect transfer of momentum and kinetic energy from one mass to another, i.e. they switch momenta, so total momentum is conserved. Let's look at an example question. Two 500 kg bumper cars driving at 2.5 meters per second are involved in a head-on collision. The two drivers have masses of 55 and 80 kg respectively. Given that the collision is elastic, what are the final velocities of the bumper cars? As this is an elastic collision, the two bumper cars switch momenta. Thus, we adapt the formula to give mass 2 times initial velocity 2 equals mass 1 times final velocity 1 and mass 1 times initial velocity 1 equals mass 2 times final velocity 2. Rearranging the numbers in both formulas gets us velocities of 2.6 meters per second and 2.4 meters per second. During a partially inelastic collision, there is an imperfect transfer of momentum, resulting in the loss of some kinetic energy in the form of heat or sound. The objects move away with different momenta, but the total momentum is conserved. Let's look at an example question. A billiard player strikes the cue ball at 1.2 meters per second hitting a striped ball into the pocket and continuing to roll at 0.2 meters per second. The mass of both balls is 170 grams. What is the velocity of the striped ball? As this is a partially inelastic collision, we use the default formula. Mass 1 times initial velocity 1 plus mass 2 times initial velocity 2 equals mass 1 times final velocity 1 plus mass 2 times final velocity 2. Rearranging the numbers gets us a velocity of 1 meters per second. Note, if masses are equal, the sum of the initial velocities will equal the sum of the final velocities in elastic and partially inelastic collisions. 
During a perfectly inelastic collision, there is an imperfect transfer of momentum, resulting in one object losing its maximum kinetic energy in the form of heat or sound. The two objects combine to form one object and move away together, with total momentum conserved. Because the two objects combine into one, the formula changes to mass 1 times initial velocity 1 plus mass 2 times initial velocity 2, which equals mass 1 plus mass 2 times final velocity. Let's look at an example question. A runaway cart collides with a three cart trolley so that the four cart wreck is moving at 8 meters per second, releasing sound and heat in the process. Each cart has a mass of 5 times 10 to the 4 kilograms. What is the velocity of the runaway cart before the collision? As this is a perfectly inelastic collision, we use the given formula to get mass 1 times initial velocity 1 plus mass 2 times initial velocity 2 equals mass 1 plus mass 2 times final velocity. Rearranging the numbers gives us a velocity of 32 meters per second. During an explosion, an object at rest separates into several pieces that travel in separate directions. The lost kinetic energy has been converted into heat or sound, but the law of conservation of momentum still applies. The explosive at rest has a momentum of zero, so if it explodes into n number of fragments, zero equals the sum of the momenta of the n fragments produced. Let's look at an example question. A 270 kilogram bomb splits into two fragments, traveling in opposite directions at 50 meters per second and 40 meters per second. What are the masses of the two fragments? So, zero equals momentum of fragment one plus momentum of fragment two. Thus, zero equals 50 times mass one plus minus 40 times mass two. This can be rearranged to give 40 times mass 2 equals 50 times mass 1. To then provide a ratio of mass 1 to mass 2, we do 40 divided by 50, i.e. 4 to 5. Hence, mass 1 is 4 ninths of 270 kilograms, which is 120 kilograms. And mass 2 is the remainder of 270, which is 150 kilograms. Now you know the scenarios during which the law of conservation of momentum applies, how does this relate to the concepts of mechanics previously covered? Well, momentum is related to force via impulse. Impulse, denoted as delta P, is defined as the change in momentum, also measured in kilograms meters per second. To see why this is important, let's return to our first example in this video. If your friend throws you the football, it takes very little force to change the football's lower momentum to zero, whereas it takes a lot of force to change the bowling ball's higher momentum to zero. So we can see that the magnitude of the stopping force is related to the magnitude of the change in momentum. The magnitude of the stopping force is also affected by the time it takes to stop the object. Imagine a boxer punching a wall and then a punching bag. The wall stops the punch by providing a very high stopping force instantly, whereas the punching bag stops the same punch by providing a lower stopping force over a greater amount of time. So, the magnitude of the stopping force is related to the rate of change in momentum, or the rate of impulse. Mathematically, this can be broken down into force equals impulse divided by change in time, which can be further simplified to force equals mass times change in velocity divided by change in time, and then force equals mass times acceleration. As a result, a second definition of Newton's second law arises. This is that the resultant force of an object is proportional to its rate of change in momentum, i.e. the rate of impulse. The formula for this is force equals impulse divided by change in time. This is in fact the preferred definition of Newton's second law, since it is applicable in more complex situations. Note that in both definitions, mass must remain constant for the law to apply. The IB then expects you to use this relationship to analyze force time graphs of collisions. 
These often appear as triangular lines, where the area under the line at any point is equal to the impulse up to that point. Let's look at an example question. The graph below is the force time graph of a boxer punching a bag. What is the impulse of the collision? The impulse equals the area under the line, which is a half times base times height. Thus, the impulse is 11 kilograms meters per second. A special scenario of calculating force occurs when a water jet hits an object, such as a wall. Problems typically give the water jet's cross-sectional area, water density, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and water velocity to calculate the exerted force. The simple formula for the water's momentum is 1,000 times cross-sectional area times velocity squared. This is also equal to the exerted force. Let's do an example question. A hose with a cross-sectional area of 13 centimeters squared sprays a water jet at 25 meters per second against a wall, instantly stopping the water. What is the force exerted on the wall by the water jet? So, the exerted force is 1000 times cross-sectional area times velocity squared, which is 813 newtons. You have now covered all of the content you need to understand momentum and impulse for your IB Physics exam. We hope you enjoy the fifth and final video in our IB Physics Topic 2 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.